In this video, I'm breaking down everything you need to know about Apple's brand new container tool for macOS. WWDC 2025 recently took place, and among the key announcements, Apple has introduced a brand new open source containerization framework and a command line tool called Container CLI. This tool is designed to let you run Linux containers natively on your Mac, and it's fully optimized for Apple's silicon. It will be integrated directly into macOS 26, which is codenamed Tahoe. Now you might be wondering, how is this different from Docker or Podman? Here's the key difference. Docker and Podman on Mac run all your Linux containers inside a single heavy virtual machine. What do I mean by heavy? Well, that virtual machine is resource intensive. It takes up a lot of RAM and CPU, and it's always running in the background, even if you're not using any containers. It also uses a big chunk of disk space for the full Linux environment. The consequence is that your Mac can slow down, battery life can take a hit, and if something goes wrong with one container, it could potentially affect all the others because they share the same underlying virtual machine. Apple's new approach is different. Each Linux container gets its own lightweight virtual machine. This means better security. If one container is compromised, it can't mess with the others. It also means better performance and privacy, since each container only uses resources when it's running, and any files you share with the container are only accessible to that specific container, not to all containers at once. But what about compatibility? Apple's tool is fully compatible with OCI container images. OCI stands for Open Container Initiative, and it's an industry standard for packaging up software and everything it needs to run. If you've used Docker images before, you've used OCI images. They're the same thing. This means you can pull images from Docker Hub or any standard registry, and they'll just work with Apple's tool. But what do we know and what don't we know about this new tool? Here's what's clear. It's open source, it's deeply integrated with macOS, and it's focused on security and developer convenience. Here's what's still uncertain. As of the WWDC 25 announcement, Apple has not addressed the long-standing GPU limitation. Containers running on macOS still can't access the Mac's GPU for hardware acceleration, which means if you're working with AI or machine learning workloads that need GPU power, you're still facing the same barriers as before. I've done a whole video about that if you'd like to learn more. There's no official word yet on when or if GPU pass-through will be supported. So how do you get started and is it available yet? As of today, the new containerization framework and CLI are available to developers running the macOS 26 beta. You can access the open source code on Apple's developer portal, and the CLI tool is included with the latest Xcode beta. To use it, you just need to install the beta, open your terminal, and follow Apple's documentation to pull and run containers. It's early days, but if you're a developer who relies on containers, Now's the time to start experimenting and see how this new approach fits into your workflow. To sum up, Apple's new container tool is a big leap forward for developers on macOS. It's secure, fast, and built for the future, but the GPU limitation could still be an issue. We don't know that yet for sure. If you want to stay ahead of the curve, give it a try and see what it can do for your projects. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.